Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am an actor in tonight's play, The Skin of Our Teeth. The author of this play, Thornton Wilder, intended that it should start with a typical American newscast. We are not able to do this newscast. But I can give you an idea of the kind of items that were to be in this typical American newscast. Interesting items, such as that in Freeport, Long Island, the sun rose this morning at 6.32 a.m. The Society for the Declaration of the End of the World at once went into a special session to postpone the arrival of the big day for 24 hours. Another item came from New York City, saying that immediately following the exodus of tonight's studio audience from the quiz show, Who's Your Father?, a number of lost objects were collected, as usual, by Mesdames Simpson, Pavlosky, and Moriarty. Among the objects found was a wedding ring inscribed to Eva from Adam, Genesis 2.18. The announcer said that the ring would be restored to the owner or owners if their credentials were satisfactory. Then he gave a weather report about the unprecedented cold wave which had disrupted communications throughout America. He reported a wall of ice moving steadily south from to Hatches, Vermont. And finally, most interesting item of all, a feature story from Excelsior, New Jersey, the home of Mr. George Antrobus, the inventor of the wheel. The discovery of the wheel following so closely on the discovery of the lever has centered the attention of the country on Mr. Antrobus and his family. Mr. Antrobus himself comes of very old stock and has worked his way up from next to nothing. He is a veteran of foreign wars and bears a number of scars, front and back. And this is Mrs. Antrobus, the gracious and charming president of the Excelsior Mothers Club. Mrs. Antrobus is an excellent needlewoman. It is she who invented the apron upon which so many interesting changes have been rung since that time. And here we see the Antrobuses with their children, Henry and Gladys. And friend, the friend in the rear, is Lily Sabina, their general utility maid. And here we see the home of the typical American family, a commodious seven-room house conveniently situated near a school, a Methodist church, and a fire station. Come in, 216 Cedar Street, Excelsior, New Jersey. Oh, oh, oh. Six o'clock and the master not home yet. Pray God nothing serious has happened to him crossing the Hudson River. Here it is the middle of August and the coldest day of the year. It's simply freezing. Ah! The dogs are sticking to the sidewalks. Can anyone explain that? No. But I'm not surprised. The whole world's at sixes and sevens. And why the house hasn't fallen down about our ears long ago is a miracle to me. Every night, this same anxiety as to whether the master will get home safely, whether he'll bring home anything to eat. In the midst of life, we are in the midst of death. A truer word was never said. Mr. Antrobus is a very fine man, an excellent husband and father, a pillar of the church, and has all the best interests of the community at heart. Of course, every muscle goes tight every time he passes a policeman. But what I think is, there are certain charges that ought not to be made. After all, we're all human. Who isn't? Mrs. Antrobus is as fine a woman as you could hope to see. She lives only for her children. And if it'd be any benefit to her children, she'd be glad to see the rest of it stretched out dead at her feet. If you want to know anything more about Mrs. Antrobus, just go and look at a tigress and look hard. As to the children, well, Henry Antrobus is a real clean-cut American boy. He'll graduate from high school one of these days, if they make the alphabet any easier. Henry, when he has a stone in his hand, has a perfect aim. He can hit anything from a bird to an older brother. Oh, I didn't mean to say that, but it certainly was hard getting the police out of the house. Mr. and Mrs. Andrewbusy's daughter is named Gladys. She'll make some good man a good wife someday, if you'll just come down off the movie screen and ask her. So, here we are. We've managed to survive for some time now. Catch as catch can, the fat and the lean. And if the dinosaurs don't trample us to death, we'll all live to see better days. Knock on wood. Yes, we've rattled along hot and cold. And my advice to you is not to inquire into the why or whither, but just enjoy your ice cream while it's on your plate. That's my philosophy. Don't forget that a few years ago, we came through the depression by the skin of our teeth. One more tight squeeze like that, and where will we be? We, we came through the depression by the skin of our teeth. One more tight squeeze like that, and where will we be?
Oh, 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 oh. Six o'clock and the master not home yet. Pray God nothing serious has happened to him crossing the Hudson River. Here it is in the middle of August. Day of the year, it's simply freezing. The dogs are sticking. One more tight squeeze like that, and where will we be? Miss Somerset, invent something, anything, anything. Well, uh, this uh, certainly uh, is a very over here. Well, uh, this uh, certainly is a very fine American home, and uh, everybody's very happy. Uh, oh, I can't invent any words for this play, and I'm glad I can't. I hate this play and every word in it. As for me, I don't understand a single word of it anyway. All about the troubles the human race has come through. There's a subject for you. Why can't we have plays like we used to have? Peg of my heart, smiling through, the bat. Good entertainment with a message you can take home with you. Oh, it. it'll all be the same in a hundred years. Oh, 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 we came through the depression by the skin of our teeth. One more tight squeeze like that and where will we be? Sabina. Oh. You've let the fire go out. Here it is, the coldest day of the year, right in the middle of August, and you've let the fire go out. Miss Zandrovitz, I'd like to give my two weeks' notice, Miss Zandrovitz. A girl like I can get a situation in a home where they're rich enough to have a fire in every room, Mrs. Andrews. And a home without children, Mrs. Andrews, because children are a thing that only a parent can stand, and a truer word was never said. And a home, Mrs. Andrews where the master of the house don't pinch decent, self-respecting girls when he meets them in a dark corridor. I mention no names. I make no charges. So you have my notice, Mrs. Andrews, and I hope that's perfectly clear. You've let the fire go out. Have you milked the mammoth? I don't understand a word of this play. Yes, I've milked the mammoth. Until Mr. Andrews comes home, we have no food and not enough fire. You better go round to the neighbours and borrow some fire. Mrs. Andrews, I can't. I'd die on the way. You know I would. It's worse than January. The dogs are sticking to the sidewalks. I die. Very well, I'll go. Oh, you never come back alive. We'd all perish. How do we know Mr. Andrews will be back? We don't know. If you go out, I'll just kill myself. Get up, Sabina. Oh, every night the same thing. Will he come back safe or won't he? Will we starve to death or freeze to death or boil to death? Or will we be killed by burglars? I don't know why we go on living. It's easier being dead. The same oh. old thing. Always throwing up the sponge, Sabina. Oh. Always announcing your own death. But give you a new hat or a plate of ice cream or a ticket to the movies. You want to live forever. You don't care whether we live or die. All you care about is those children. And if it'd be any benefit to them, you'd be glad to see the rest of us stretched out dead. Well, maybe I would. And what do they care about? Themselves. They make fun of you behind your back. Little thanks you get from them. I'm not asking for any thanks. And Mr. Andrews, you don't understand him. All that work he does, trying to discover the alphabet and the multiplication table. Every time he tries to learn anything, you fight against oh, it. Oh, Sabina, I know you. When Mr. Andrews raped you home from those Sabine Hills, he did it to insult me. He did it for your pretty face and to insult me. You with a new wife, weren't you? For a year or two, you lay on your bed all day, polishing the nails on your hands and feet. You made puff balls of the combings of your hair and blew them up to the ceiling. And I washed your underclothes. And I made you chicken broths. I bore children. And between my very groans, I stirred the cream that you put on your face. But I knew you wouldn't last. You didn't last. But it was I who encouraged Mr. Andrews to make the alphabet. I'm sorry to say it, Mrs. Andrews, but you're not a beautiful woman. And you could never know what a man could do if he tried. It's girls like I who inspire the multiplication table. I'm sorry to say it, Mrs. Andrews, you're not a beautiful woman, and that's the God's truth. You didn't last. You sank to the kitchen. And what do you do there? You let the fire go out. But I keep the home going. Oh, there's that dinosaur on the front lawn again. Ooh, go away, go away. It's cold. It's cold. Now you go round to the back of the house where you belong. It's like that all the way through. The author can't make up his silly mind as to whether we're living back in caves or in New Jersey today. Oh, I wish it were ten o'clock. I don't want to be dragged through this whole play again. Oh, oh Mrs. Andrews, Mrs. Andrews. Help, help me, quick, quick. Oh, my goodness. What will we do? Who is it? What do you want? A telegram from Mrs. Antrobus, from Mr. Antrobus in the city. A 
telegram, oh. Sabina. We can open the door. Oh, oh, I'm sorry to keep you waiting, but we have to be careful, you know. Oh. Will you be quiet? Have you had your supper? Are you ready to come in? Sabina! Like I told you, Miss Adamus, two weeks, that's the law. I hope that's perfectly clear. Now, uh, what's this telegram you have for me? Um, to Mrs. Antrobus, Excelsior, New Jersey. My dear wife will be an hour late, busy day at the office. Don't worry the children about the cold, just keep them warm. Uh, burn everything except Shakespeare. Great knows I'd burn ten Shakespeare's to prevent a child of mine from having one cold in the head. Great new discoveries today have separated M from N. I know what that is. That's the alphabet. Yes, it is. Mr. Andrew is just the cleverest man. Go on with the telegram. Ten tens make a hundred semicolon. Consequences far reaching. The earth is turning to ice, and all he can do is to make up new numbers. What does he say next? Well, I can't do this last part very well. <clears throat> Happy wedding anniversary to oh, you. Oh, Happy oh, wedding Johnny. anniversary. Oh, Happy Happy wedding anniversary. Dear Happy wedding anniversary, dear Eva. Happy wedding anniversary to you. Oh, isn't that oh. nice? Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, there's one more sentence in the telegram. Three cheers have invented the wheel. Wheel? What's wheel? a wheel? I don't know. But the sign for it goes like this. Well, goodbye. Young man, what are people saying about this cold weather? They say there's a wall of ice moving down from the north. That's what they say. I think we'll all perish, that's what I think. Cold like this in August is just the end of the world. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mrs. Andrebus, I want to take back the notice I gave you. Mrs. Andrebus, I don't want to leave a house that gets such interesting... Goodbye. Goodbye. Such interesting telegrams. And I'm sorry for anything I said. I really am. Goodbye. Goodbye. Dolly. Frederick. Do you ever remember hearing about any cold like this in August? From your grandmother or anyone? Have you any suggestions? No, Henry! Gladys, come right in here and get warm. What's going on out here? Where's your brother? Henry! Oh. Henry! Ah! Henry! Henry, put down that stone. Huh? You know what stone. Huh? You remember what happened last time? Gladys, put down your dress. Try to be a lady. Mama, why is it so cold? Mama, when's supper ready? Now, settle down, both of you. I want to talk to you. It's just a cold spell of some kind. Now, listen to what I'm saying. When your father comes home, I want you to be extra quiet. He's had a hard day at the office, and I don't know what he may be in one of his moods. Henry. Henry! Why can't you remember to keep your hair down over your forehead? You must keep that scar covered up. Don't you know that when your father sees it, he loses all control over himself? He goes crazy. He wants to die. Now lift up your head. I'm oh, gonna... Don't stop the machine. Blessed me. Sometimes I think it's going away and then... There it is. Just as red as ever. Mama, at school today, two teachers forgot. Called me by my old name. Right out in class, they called me Cain. Don't say it. They'll forget it if you're good. You, you didn't hurt anyone today, did you? Oh, no. Now, Gladys, I want you to be especially nice to your father tonight. You know what he calls you when you're good. His little angel, his oh. little star. So keep your dress down like a little lady and keep your voice down low. And Gladys Antrobus. What's that red stuff you have on your face? <laughs> You're a filthy, detestable child. Get away from me, both of you. I wish I'd never seen sight nor sound of you. Let the cold come. I can't stand it. I don't want to go on. But all the girls at school do, Mama. I'm through with you, that's all. Don't you know your father would go crazy if he saw you with that paint on your face? Don't you know your father thinks you're perfect? Sabina, 
Sabina, come and take the paint off this girl's face. Oh! oh. oh. Dennis, Sabina, help me quick, quick. Have you got any barley water ready? Oh, no. Who is it? What do you want? Broken down camel of a pig snout. Open this door. God be praised. It's your father. His father? <laughs> Just a minute, George. Come here, Vadis. Sabina, you can clear the door. I'll break every bone in your body. Let me in and I'll clear the whole house down. Well, just a minute, George. There's something the matter with the lamp. Open this door. Now I'm ready, Sabina. You can open the door. Well, and how's the whole crooked family? Oh, well, Mr. Scott, I'm sorry if I may. Grand Jeff, that'll welcome when he comes home. Well, Maggie, you old gunny sack, how's the broken out old weather hand? Sabina, old fish bait? How they been, Maggie? How they been? I must say they've been as good as gold. I haven't had to raise my voice once. Uh, Sabina, there's some food for you. Mr. Andrews, I'm leaving two weeks from today. I'm sorry, but I'm leaving. Two weeks. That's the law. <laughs> Papa! Hey. Hey, Papa, you hit me. That's to make you remember today. The day the alphabet was finished and the wheel was invented. Oh, I've had a day at the office. Maggie, we've reached the top of the wave. There's not much more to be done. We're there. And the ice... Henry? Children, you go out in the kitchen. I want to talk to your father alone. Uh, Frederick, go fetch. Well? It's cold. I know it's cold. How's things been, eh? You could prevent us freezing to death, can't you? You can do something. We could start moving. We could go on the animals' backs. The best thing about animals is they don't talk much. It's cold. Hey, 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 watch oh. that, watch that. By midnight, we turn to ice. The roads are full of people now who can scarcely lift a foot from the ground. And that's what's going to happen to us? Will you answer me? I don't know, Maggie. I don't know anything. Some say the ice is getting slower. Some say it's stopped. The sun's growing cold. What can I do about that? I think we can do except burn everything in the house and the fence posts and the barn. Keep the fire going. When we have no more fire, we die. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? It's there's a great big white thing moving this way. It's treacherous. It's ice. It's ice. It's What's that? Who's that calling you? I'm going to warm our hands for a moment, it's Mrs. Antrobus. Go away. Go away. Tell them to move along. Move along. No, Maggie. Sabina, I want you to go in the kitchen and make a lot of coffee. Make a whole pailful. Pailful? And sandwiches. Piles of them, like this. But George, you're not going to let these people in. Oh. I see what this part of the play means now. This means refugees. Oh, I don't like it. I don't like it. Ladies and gentlemen, don't take this place seriously. The world's not really coming to an end. You know it's not. People exaggerate. That ice business, well, it was a long, long time ago. Mr. 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 Please. Oh, all right, all right. I'll say the lines, but I won't think about them. I advise you not to think about them either. George, what does this mean? That you've asked all these tramps into this house? No, well, it's just a few friends. I met along the road, Maggie. George, Antipas, not another soul comes in here over my dead body. Maggie, there's a doctor there. Never hurts to have a good doctor in the house. We've lost a peck of children one way or another. Well, just one person then, the doctor. The others could go right along the road. And there's an old man, a particular friend of mine. Homer. I won't listen to you. But it was he that really started off the ABCs. Wait, 
I don't care if he perishes. We can do without reading and writing. We can't do without food. Then let the ice come. Drink your coffee. I don't want any coffee if I can't drink it with some good people. Stop shouting. Who else is there waiting to push us off the cliff? Well, there's the man who makes all the laws. Judge Moses. Judges can't help us now. And if the ice melts, and if we pull through, have you and I been able to bring up Henry? What have we done? Who are those old women? Up in town, there are nine sisters. There's uh, three of them here now. They're sort of music teachers. Uh, one of them recites That's and the one of them... That's the end of singing troupe. Well, take your choice. Live or die. Starve your own children before your face. These people don't take much. They're used to starving. They don't sleep on the floor. All right. Let them in. You're the master here. But these animals will have to go. Enough's enough. They'll soon be big enough to push the walls down anyway. Take them away. Don't look at me. All right. The dinosaur and the mammoth. Come on, baby. Come on, Frederick. Come for a walk. There's a good little fella. Come on in, Miss Muse. Come in, sir. Come in. Now make yourself. Thank you so much. Thank you. Come in. Pleased to meet you. That's right. Thank Make you, yourself Mr. comfortable. Supper will be ready in a minute. Sabina! Sabina, pass the sandwiches. I thought I was working in a respectable house that had respectable guests. I'm giving my notice, Mr. Andrews. Two weeks, that's the law. Booby, pass the sandwiches. Two weeks, that's the law. There's the law. That's Moses. The Ten Commandments. Four. That's the worst line I've ever had to say in any play. Oh! Uh, a judge, uh, Thank you so much. Uh, help yourself to one of these. Thank you. Thank you very much. The roads are crowded, I hear. People are trampling one another. The ice is going to kill us. I don't believe the whole world's going to turn to ice. I can't believe it. Judge, have we worked for nothing? <sighs> Professor. Have we just failed in the whole thing? It certainly is very strange. Well, on both sides of the family, we come a very hardy stock. Doctor, I wanted to meet my children. And, of course, I want my children to meet you. Of course. How many children you got, Mrs. Anthropus? I have two. A boy and a girl. I understood you had two sons, Mrs. Anthropus. Oh, the end. Help of my son, my son. Help of my son. Help of my son. Henry! What's that about? Mr. Andrews, that son of yours, that boy, Henry Andrews. I don't stay in this house another moment. He's not fit to live among respectable folks, and that's a fact. Not another word, Sabina. I'll be right back. Mr. Andrews, Henry has thrown a stone again. And if he hasn't killed the boy that lives next door, I'm very much mistaken. I saw it with my own eyes, and it looked to me like stark murder. George, it was just a boy's impulse. Remember how young he is, George. He's only 4,000 years old. He was going to take the wheel away from me. He started to throw a stone at me first. Put out the fire. Oh, no. Put out all the fires? No wonder the sun no, grows no, cold. No, 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 mind. no, 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 here I am, not my father's slippers. How could you forget a thing like that when you know how tired he is? Can't some of you sing? It's your business in life to sing, isn't it? Sabina! George, George, remember all those other times? The time when the volcano came right up in the front yard, and the time when the grasshoppers ate every leaf and blade of grass? 
Oh. And the summer there were earthquakes every night. Henry. Myself. All of us. We're covered in blood. Henry. Yes, Mama. Recite to your father that multiplication table you do so nicely. Yes, Mama. Two times six is twelve. Three times six is eighteen. Four times six is... is... I don't think I know the sixes. Papa, Papa, I was very good in school today. Miss Carnover said right out in class that if all the girls had as good manners as Gladys Antropus, that the world would be a very different place to live in. You recited the pieces of assembly, didn't you? Recited to your father. Papa, do you want to hear what I recited in class today? The Star by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Wait, the fire's going out. Henry, go upstairs and start bringing down the chairs. Break up the beds. Just above yon sandy bar, as the day grows fainter and dimmer, lonely and lovely, a single star fills the air with a dusky glimmer. I into the... Papa, you're not mad at me, are you? Papa, I know it'll get warmer. Soon it'll be just like spring. And we can go on a picnic to the Hibernian picnic ground, just like you like to do. Don't you remember? Papa, just look at me once. You recited an assembly, did you? You didn't forget it? No, I was perfect. Build up the fire. It's cold. Build up the fire. We'll do what we can. Come around the fire, everybody. Sabina, go and bring up some chairs. At least the young ones may pull through. If you do come through this, what will you be able to do? What do you know? Six times two are... Twelve, Papa. Six times three are eighteen. Six times... Papa, it's hot and cold. It makes my head go all funny. It makes me sleepy. Don't wake up. I don't care if your head is sleepy. Six times four are twenty-four. Six times five are thirty, Papa. Maggie, put something into Gladys's head on the chance you can six use it. Six times six are thirty-six. Six times six are thirty-six. Six times six Teach in the beginning of the Bible. Six oh, times seven so are forty-two. In the beginning, six God times created eight the heavens and the earth. Are forty-eight. In the beginning, six God times nine are the heavens and the earth. Six and the earth six was times waste ten are sixty. And the six earth six was times waste and void. And the darkness was upon the face of the Six times twelve are seventy-two. Six times thirteen are seventy-eight. Save the human race! Stand in your chairs, everybody! Save the human race! Save the human race! Six times seventeen.